All right, welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, coffee and tea are the most consumed beverages across the world. We've talked a lot about coffee. We've talked about how it's so good when it comes to brain health, kidney health, liver health, even in terms of prevention of kidney stones. But what about tea? So let's look at the latest data on tea and see what you can take home from it. So some of the studies that have already come out have shown that drinking tea regularly is actually linked to low risk of fractures in women. Specifically, there was a study that showed that drinking one cup of black tea daily was actually linked to about a 9% lower risk of fractures in women over 80 years old. Now, this was compared to women who didn't drink tea at all or less than one cup per week. Drinking tea is also been shown to be linked to lower liver stiffness. Remember, this is similar to where coffee comes in too. Now, we don't know if the mechanism is the same, but what we do know is both coffee and tea are protected when it comes to liver stiffness. And what's liver stiffness? Well, that's where you see things like scarring occurring in the liver, and that can be seen with a variety of diseases, including something that we don't talk about as much, which is fatty liver. All right, so let's get into the latest data and what's it got to tell us. So there's a new study out. It's once again, it's a prospective cohort. This is the UK Biobank data, and they were basically looking at questionnaires for about 498,000 people. Now, these were all folks that were about 40 to 69 years old. 94% were white. So remember, keep that in mind that this may not apply to the rest of the population, but we have other data that does. So that other data is similar to what we're going to talk about today. And this particular study, they had about an 11-year follow-up going on. Now, what they found was that if you drank two or more cups of black tea, that was linked to about a 13% lower risk of dying from any cause or what we call all-cause mortality. Now, what's interesting about this is there was a sweet spot in the study, and that sweet spot, literally similar to coffee, was two to three cups. So remember, when we talked about coffee, we said two to three cups a day, caffeinated or decaffeinated, had the best benefit. If you went higher than that, the benefit wasn't there and there were more side effects. Less than that, there was less benefit going on. Same thing here. Now, what was interesting about the study was they also adjusted for the fact that what happened if somebody's drinking both tea and coffee versus just tea alone? It actually didn't make a difference. The results were still the same. So if you only drank tea or if you drank tea and coffee, you still get the same results. Also, if you added milk, if you added sugar, if you drank the tea, whether it was hot or cold, none of those things affected the outcome. So once again, the bottom line here was two to three cups of black tea was actually still linked to about a nine to 13% lower risk of all cause mortality or dying from anything. And then the last thing was the question is, is it possible that how your caffeine is metabolized in your system is why some people get benefit from tea. When they looked at those genetic variants when it came to caffeine metabolism, that didn't have a difference either. So what's the take home today? It's very simple. If you like coffee, drink coffee. If you like tea, drink tea. Realize that both of them can be a healthy addition to your overall daily routine. What's the sweet spot for both? Two to three cups a day. As always, if you got a question, a topic you wanna to learn more about, Drop me a line at selfprinciple at gmail.com and I'll see you next time.